Hi, my name is Bern Zukowski and I'm a tech evangelist at Esri and I'm here today to answer your 10 questions for Esri about WebGIS. The first question, of course, is what is WebGIS? Well, simply put, WebGIS is a new pattern for implementing a modern GIS. It's based upon web services, web services that come from the cloud, ArcGIS Online, or web services that you publish using your own ArcGIS server, or typically a combination of both. Now, these services deliver information in the forms of maps, apps, and scenes, and they make that information more usable and more accessible. And these also include capabilities like analysis that you can apply to your data to gain insight. The next question is, what's the importance of WebGIS? And of course, we think WebGIS is fundamentally important, and it's fundamentally changed how we think about GIS and what we can do with GIS. Uh, this new pattern makes GIS easier, makes it more accessible, more affordable, and allows us to reach a broader audience with the work that we do. It also makes it easier to integrate with other enterprise systems like SharePoint, Office, and business intelligence systems. And it provides access to a large and growing library of base maps, layers, thematic maps, real-time feeds. We think of this as the living atlas. The next question is, uh, actually, I, we got this question quite a bit. What's a portal and what's the difference between a portal with a small p and a portal with a capital P? Well, a portal is a part of WebGIS and it represents an organization's geographic information ecosystem. A portal provides the needed geospatial framework and organizational structure to discover, to share, and to use content, and it also manages the identity of members, their roles and their privileges within an organization. It supports a sharing model that leverages these users and groups and privileges, and it also supports a geo-information model that's composed of web maps, layers, and scenes. Now you can host your portal in the cloud using ArcGIS Online, or you can host your portal on-premises using Portal with a capital P for ArcGIS. The next question is, as a GIS professional, what implications does WebGIS have for me? And I think that WebGIS has lots of implications for GIS professionals. Uh, first and foremost, it doesn't diminish the role of a GIS professional. In fact, I really think it enhances the role of GIS professionals and makes your work more important, uh, simply because it enables the work that you do to be viewed by a much larger, larger audience and to be used in many different ways. But it does require a different way of thinking. GIS professionals don't necessarily build all of the end user maps and apps anymore, but might instead be building the building blocks, the authoritative building blocks to enable others to build their own maps and apps. And it also presents some new challenges for us. And we have to learn some new skills along the way that maybe in the past we didn't need to think about. These are skills like web design and uh, creating great user experiences, uh, proficiency with web development tools and knowledge of mobile and native application environments and new ways to publish data and make maps and even things like telling great stories. So I think GIS professionals need to keep looking forward, need to keep abreast of where WebGIS is taking us and where the related technologies are taking us and keep up to speed and ramp up continually. Next question is, does ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro leverage ArcGIS Online? Uh, are these two products complementary and which of these should I be using? ArcGIS Desktop is, of course, a core part of the ArcGIS platform, and that's the foundation of WebGIS. ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro are certainly complementary and both support WebGIS, but clearly ArcGIS Pro is the more capable. It's been designed from the ground up as a WebGIS application, and it offers capabilities above and beyond ArcMap. Both can be used to, together, and personally, I switch back and forth between the two. There's still a lot of things that I'm more familiar with doing in ArcMap, so that might be my default, but I try as much as possible to learn more and more about ArcGIS Pro. And there's a number of things that ArcGIS Pro offers that simply can't be done in ArcMap. So there's many good reasons to begin using Pro. The next question is, what does smart mapping mean? And 
uh, we actually got a lot of questions along these lines. Smart mapping is built into the map authoring experience. And what's meant to do is enable anyone to make great looking maps quickly and easily. And it takes a data-driven approach to doing that and it presents the right tools at the right time to guide you along the way. It bakes in cartographic expertise. It's one way of thinking about it. And it uses smart defaults to help you make great looking maps without a lot of knowledge or cartographic skills. And it suggests things along the way. Now, um, experts can override these defaults and can leverage these suggestions to make their own awesome maps. So you don't uh, have to stick with what smart mapping provides, but you can also go beyond those bounds and do your own thing. The next question is, um, what is Insights? And there were a number of questions about this as well. Insights for ArcGIS was introduced earlier this year at our federal GIS conference and was also introduced at the recent Dev Summit. Uh, Insights, one way to think about it, is that it's a new kind of experience that's being added to ArcGIS that enables exploratory and interactive spatial analysis. It uses maps and charts and tables. These are all connected and they're presented in an easy to use environment. It introduces a couple of new concepts as well, the concepts of workbooks, pages, and cards. And you visualize your data on these cards using maps or charts or tables. And there's interactive uh, interactivity between all of these. So you can drag and drop from one to another and see what happens. So a lot of it is exploring uh, these what-if scenarios and discovering things. Now, a really interesting part about this is that whatever you do is recorded. Um, models are created that you can share with others so that they can reproduce and follow your steps. The next question is, I hear a lot about web maps, about app builder and configurable apps, story maps. What are all these things and can I clarify what they mean? First and foremost, a web map is a fundamental building block of ArcGIS. Um, at Esri, a web map is more than a map in the browser. It's a technical specification that all the development teams adhere to, and that enables maps to be used across a variety of different applications and many different devices. And if we kind of go down through the list of apps, let me describe each one of those individually. So the first might be the ArcGIS apps. These are collector for ArcGIS, operations dashboard for ArcGIS, navigator for ArcGIS, and more. Uh, these are task or workflow focused. They're downloadable and they're configured within your ArcGIS organization. And I think of these as a core part of the ArcGIS platform, uh, just like uh, ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro are. Now, the next category of uh, apps so we can think of as configurable apps that work in browsers. Now, they're featured when you share a map and choose Create a Web App. They're organized in the categories like exploring and summarizing data, comparing maps or layers, collecting and editing data, showcasing a map and more, and they're configured using a configuration panel. Now, story maps are also configurable apps, but they're designed with a specific purpose in mind, and that's to help you tell a story by combining rich text and media like photos and videos and more with your authoritative maps. And story maps are configured using a builder. You can think of that as a helper map that guides you along the process of authoring your story. The next set of uh, applications we can think of as ArcGIS solutions. And these are available for a range of industries like uh, utilities, a local and state government, uh, military, and lots more. Now these are configurable apps as well, but they're built to support common information and workflow needs within these specific domains. Web App Builder is a way to create custom HTML and JavaScript apps using a library of widgets. These apps can run on any device and you can host them online or run them from your own server. Now, Web App Builder also enables you to create custom app templates. It's the easiest way to create custom app templates that you can use across your organization. App Studio is a pretty unique product. Uh, it's a great way to create mobile apps that run on multiple platforms. So these days we have to think about lots of different platforms. And in the past, you'd need a developer to build an app for Windows, maybe another developer to build an app for iOS. 
yet another for Android and so forth. But using App Studio, you can build that app once and deploy it across all these different operating systems and environments. And it also enables you to do your own branding and engage with Google Play and the Apple and Microsoft app stores. So there's no coding requirement. You just pick a template and configure it. But if you're a developer, you can take these templates and extend it with your own customizations. But I think the best way to clarify what all of these options mean is to think about what you want to do. Uh, do you want to enable a field workforce? Do you want to bring GIS to your front office? Do you want to reach decision makers or a public audience? So the answers to those questions will help guide you to the right applications and the right solutions. And you can learn more at esri.com slash apps. The next question is, what's my favorite thing in the latest release of ArcGIS Online? Um, as you know, ArcGIS Online is updated several times a year. And there have been some pretty amazing things that have been evolving over time. Uh, smart mapping, I think, is one of my favorites. And a couple of releases ago, we allowed you to illuminate multiple attributes in your maps, which is a pretty cool capability. Uh, recently, we added the ability to look at the predominance uh, by using something called predominant category styles to highlight what the predominant attribute is while also shading your map thematically. Uh, in the latest release, we also introduced the ability to create custom base maps, which I like a lot. And we also introduced vector tiles, which you can customize cartographically any way that you want. So I think those are pretty key. Um, there's always something new happening with apps. We just released some new 3D configurable apps. There's usually something happening with story maps. This last release, we uh, introduced autoplay, which is a key feature if you're running story maps at displays at museums, at kiosks, or in your operations center. But I really think you should decide for yourself what you like best. Uh, the What's New help topics cover what's been released, and there's a series of What's New blogs which also guide you to what we've recently introduced. The next question is, what's a reasonable learning path to understand more about WebGIS and the ArcGIS platform? And of course, that's an awesome question. And, and I'm going to summarize the answers to these in a blog post on GeoNet and the ArcGIS blog able to follow these links. But there's lots of opportunities to learn more about WebGIS and the ArcGIS platform from both a conceptual level as well as a practical level. So the high level concepts to me are the wow. Um, and how you implement those, that's the how. Uh, for the concepts and the wow, I recommend that you take a look at what's been published on the Esri YouTube site, uh, E380 and look at how the wow is presented. And often this is Jack uh, doing a keynote at one of the conferences. And those are backed up by presentations which will inspire you to engage in those concepts yourself using the newly introduced tools. But each conference also publishes technical workshops which are available. So you can take a look at those and download those and use those to aid in your learning experience. And on top of that, there's lots of resources online. Some are ones that you're familiar with, like training.esri.com. There's free seminars and lessons at, those, at that location. There's also learn.arcgis.com, which is a great resource. There's a newly published online interactive book. It's called the ArcGIS book. And you can discover that and use that. Uh, there have been some MOOCs, and there's lots more. And I'll provide links to all of these in the follow-up blog post. So with that, I'd like to say thanks for all of your questions. Uh, they've been really interesting, and I hope I've been able to provide some insights and good answers to those. Feel free to contact me uh, by email or follow me on Twitter. And also make sure that you bookmark resources from Esri. Follow us on YouTube, and also uh, follow the communities on GeoNet. Thanks very much.